go way back, man. You and your brothers were adopted. How did that happen? How did you guys get in that situation where your biological parents were no longer in your life and then you were adopted? Yeah, so my, my, uh, my father was a Polish soldier um, in 1939. I mean, uh, I'm not sure whether he wanted to be or whether he got drafted. Uh, my sense is the latter. Um, and uh, he ended up uh, fighting the Germans when he invaded Poland. Uh, he was shot in, in, the, in, the, in the right trap, just uh, at the intersection of the trap and where the neck comes together. So he was a POW, met my mom down on a German farm. She was a German teenager at the time and uh, fell in love with her and her with him. Uh, you know, because my mom fell in love with him, she actually got turned in by uh, her uncle. And she went off to some indoctrination camp to figure out the Nazi way. And then my dad got put in another prisoner of war camp. Um, and uh, so after the war, uh, I mean, both of them spent, uh, you know, World War II in, in those types of camps and indoctrination uh, centers. Uh, horrible, uh, to say the least. And then, uh, you know, my, you know the, uh, they came to the United States. In, in 1952 with uh, with six uh, children. Uh, they ended up settling in in, uh, in northern New Jersey. Uh, in December 1963, our, our little farmhouse that we had were 14 kids, two parents uh, burned to the ground. I remember standing out in the rain, uh, pouring down rain cold, uh, and they, having an army blanket put over top of my head uh, because uh, it was freezing and uh, just watching, you know, the house go up and um, so we, we moved into uh, uh, the basement of Lafayette, uh, ch a church in Lafayette, Pennsylvania, lived in the basement for an extended period of time. We were all, the whole family was homeless. And then uh, the New Jersey uh, Adoption Center kicked in and started placing, you know, all the kids in different foster homes. And uh, you know, I went to one home. Eddie and they kept Ed and Lou together because they were twins. They went to another home. Uh, and then I ended up uh, with Alan and Stephanie uh, Tooley as the second home and Ed and Lou uh, really lost their home and they, they needed a place to come. So he, they ended up joining me. Um, uh, and that was, uh, 1964, uh, when we finally got together. Uh, and then we stayed, we stayed, uh, in that home, uh, until we graduated high school. Interesting point. My mother, uh, and father, uh, didn't adopt us until I was a junior and they were sophomores. And, uh, my mom said, you know, Al, the kids are getting old. We probably ought to adopt them at some point. And my dad said, Hey, Steph, don't jump the gun, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but, uh, and there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of backstory humor and all that stuff. We broke everything, every bit of furniture in the house and, uh, you know, and, and literally bent my dad's crowbars. He was a construction guy, built houses and renovated things. And, and, and whatnot, but uh, there wasn't anything in that house that we didn't break at least once. And uh, it was just uh, three kids with a whole lot of energy. And fortunately for us, you know, we, we had uh, guys like Mark Fowler, uh, our, our wrestling coach there, Poor Jervis, who uh, recognized the energy and channeled it in, in a good direction. Was wrestling an important piece of your upbringing? Uh, not, not initially. I mean, it was, uh, it was actually baseball and football. We, we, uh, r really, uh, we play baseball and football all the time. And then, uh, you know, as, you know, you know, things, you know, l l life is more than what is seen. Right. So we end up bumping into Phil chase and, and, uh, and, and getting in, you know, uh, introduced to, to him and into wrestling. So, uh, Ed and Lou started in seventh grade. I started wrestling in eighth grade under coach chase and uh he didn't know a lick about wrestling but he he knew an awful lot about conditioning he was he was a pretty prominent uh guy in our in our town uh a science teacher and, and just uh you know he was a pretty interesting guy and he had a neat career in, in his, his own right and so he uh he recognized that we had a lot of energy and a lot of mental toughness and stuff and so uh he taught us the basics in wrestling and then and then mark fowler uh we you know ended up uh you know, going up and wrestling my, my uh, freshman year for him. And then, uh, and a year heard, you know, some things about Ed and Lou were doing pretty good down and in, 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 on the eighth grade team. And, uh, and then you know, Mark was not that much older than, than I was. I mean, he was probably about six or seven years older than I was, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit more, maybe eight. Uh, and, uh, he was about the same size. So there was, uh, you know, having him beat the daylights out of you every single day, uh, iron sharpens iron, right? So one man sharpens another, that was going on every day in that wrestling room. And, uh, and, you know, Mark, uh, 
um, you know, intellectually, you know, Mark, Mark was, uh, you know, pretty impressive. You know, he graduated, uh, you know, uh, high school in three years and went to Harvard and got two degrees, two undergrad degrees, uh, you know, physics and, and philosophy. And uh, so, uh, but the point on, on Mark is that he, and this is really an important point, uh, all of us can choose to invest or not to invest in, in kids, uh, you know, it, regardless of their socioeconomic status. Uh, but, uh, you know, every night after practice, uh, Mark had a Land Rover and there were seven or eight of us kids who didn't have a ride home from wrestling practice that would be stuffed in the back of that uh, uh, that Land Rover. And he'd drive us, you know, it, it would take him probably 90 minutes to get all the kids home, driving us around all different parts of uh, where we lived out there in Port Jervis. And then when wrestling season was over, he would drive us, you know, all over the Northeast to go to different tournaments and wrestling camps and took us out to Iowa uh, one year. I think Ed went out two or three years. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that's the kind of investment that he made. So it was a, a tremendous leader investment uh, and, and, you know, a voice that said, hey, you can do this, man. You, 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 get, you get educated, you get a scholarship for wrestling, and then you're on a different, you're on a different life track. And that's, and that's what Mark Fowler did for us, it, just indispensable. Uh, without Mark Fowler in our lives, you know, Ed Lou and I would have never did what we did. How does living in poverty change your view of the world? If you don't take anything for granted, uh, you know, on, on the flip side, uh, you know, I, I know how, and, and my wife does, I mean, she was, you know, um, you know, she, she was, you know, her, her dad started off, uh, you know, in, you know, being a doctor in the Philippines and in here in the United States. So, you know, you, you can live with, with a lot or live with little and, and be okay with it. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, I, I mean, life is fundamentally from, from the start to finish about how much you give back, not what you take. You know, this, it's, it's, a, it's a giving back proposition. Are, are you there to, to, to help other people um, or, or not? And, and, and it's just fundamentally what it's all about. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've tried to do that. You know, I certainly have. Uh, I know Ed and Lou have. Um, you know, whether it's uh, in our families, our church, our community. Uh, service to the country, you know, uh, you know, Ed, Ed Lou and I always thought that, you know, service to the country was, was pretty important. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, we ran into a guy, Lieutenant Colonel Mick Bartleby, who ran the uh, Iowa Hawkeye uh, ROTC battalion there. Uh, another phenomenal guy, really uh, a life changer for Lou and I. Uh, and uh, you know, he was, he was a, he was a philosopher in his own right. Uh, he'd bring us into his office. He, he smoked a pipe <clears throat> And he closed the door and we'd be in there for like, you know, two hours with this smoke filled uh, room from his, the pipe that he, that he had. And, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he would, uh, he would sit there and, and talk to us about what we ought to be doing in our lives in, 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 in the track that we were on. And, you know, he, you know, took Lou and I under his wing and made sure that we had the right courses, um, uh, in, in the things that we needed, uh, you know, to be able to go forward in life and, and be good. And, and do and do well. Lou, Lou really uh, met Mick first, and then I, I came in on the back end of it. Uh, this was right after Lou quit the team. Uh, he was in his uh, his second year there. He redshirted his first year, his redshirt freshman year. I mean, he was about 18 and four, 18 and six, or something like that. But he was cutting from 210 down to 190 and just bouncing that 20 pounds every week. It was just too much. Uh, and it was one of those deals. There's got to be more to life than wrestling, you know. And uh, and so. Uh, Lou, Lou just needed a break. And then he then he got up to about two thirty five. Was bench pressing four ten, uh, you know, flat back, and he just you know turned into, you know, kind of a different human being. And then he came back the next year, and of course, at Princeton, you know, pin bomb Gardner, and you know, the rest is history. But uh, so, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, you, you wish the best for people. You wish uh, you know through it. And, and the fundamental drivers is education. You know, if we if we can get people educated, we give them a chance. Um, you know, it's the you know this it, you know creating uh, creating noble-minded servants is important. Uh, you know, people who 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 can think at a pretty high level beyond themselves, uh, under, understand what they need, what their family needs, but also can think beyond themselves about maybe what their, what their community uh, uh, could use and, and how to, you know, at, at a very low level, not, not bringing any attention to themselves, but just working at a real, real low level uh, every day doing, doing the next right thing. And, and uh, 
making a contribution. And, and uh, you know, I think it's really honestly been the strength of our country. You know, I think, uh, you know, we, the people are, are, are the country, uh, you know, that, that gets lost uh, in, in this multimedia world that we live in. But uh, th this country still belongs to we, the people, and we have, we, we get the vote on where, where it goes and where it doesn't go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you obviously want to provide for your family in a real positive way and, and, uh, and things like that. But, uh, I think, uh, you know, you know, when, when you, when you, when you don't have, uh, what other kids have, you know, it's, sometimes it can be painful. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you learn from the experience and it makes you a better human being, uh, you know, and, and, uh, so I, I, I wouldn't, I, you know, having said all this stuff, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, it's, I mean, it's God's plan. It worked, it, it worked out perfect, you know?